This is the Daily Dispatch podcast with your business correspondent, Ted Keenan. This morning we're speaking to Ashley Apollos, who is with Impact Fund Pathisa. Ashley, what is social entrepreneur and political activist investment all about? Um, yeah, social investment or uh, impact investment refers to any kind of large-scale investment that delivers a social uh, impact that, that uh, fundamentally changes the life, the lives of, of, of people uh, in society. So that's that's very general. Um, All right. Then why the Eastern Cape? I know that Eastern Cape has been an area that has been pretty knocked about by apartheid and that, and I know in your blurb about the company apartheid is a word that's mentioned quite often. But other than making the difference to people, why Eastern Cape? And why specifically the Cove Rock area? A couple of years into our democracy, um, I came to the realization that, that, that the lives of almost 90% of the population has not significantly changed since 1994. And, and, and thinking about that, I come upon the realization that, that that's a function largely of where people live. People still live where they live. And, and one of the consequences, I think one of the lasting consequences of, of, of the many years of a is 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 in segregated living areas. And, and, and where previously disadvantaged people lived before, they, they were far removed from economic opportunity. So people have to travel hours in and out to work. Um, and they essentially created these poverty traps. And as long as people continue to live there, you know, kids still go to the same schools, parents still don't have access to economic opportunity, um, things won't fundamentally change for, for anyone. And, and then um, given, given that, and, and look, I have to say that government did exceptionally well um, with providing RDP housing and, 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 and putting roofs over people there, but there were so many contradictions in the policy. One instance is that uh, to qualify for an RTP house, or BNG as it's called now, you need to earn less than 3,500 rand. But the minimum wage in the country is 3,500 rand. So to qualify for, for, for uh, government subsidized housing, you technically have to be unemployed. So that uh, um, left many people without access to housing. Um, so that, that was fundamentally the starting point. And, and then we looked at how, how does one address that? You know, what, 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 can, what, can, we, what can we do about it? Um, that's how, how this impact simply to look at, at providing affordable housing solutions um, to people who, who, who are denied access to it. Um, so, yeah, so that, that, that was the inception of the fund. And... We start. We started. We've, we've developed projects in the Western Cap and Gauteng, Western Cap and Gauteng, and the Eastern Cap is, is is next on 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 the radar, so that we can bring the kind of transformation that we think. So, aside from the what I would imagine will be a very significant job creation, you have picked an area that you will certainly make a difference in because it's got Mercedes Benz, which is the biggest employer in East London all these subsidiary companies and suppliers to Mercedes-Benz could create employment direct and indirect to probably in excess of 20,000 people. The area that you've chosen around Cove Rock on the West Coast is booming. Are you perhaps concerned that there might be a little bit too much competition for you there? No, uh, I, I, I don't think so, Ted. I mean, if, we, if you look at our price point and, and also the product that we deliver, um, one, of, one of the things that's central to, to our, our ethos is that we best to breed and that we deliver, that, that we, we deliver a product that stands out above, above, above everything else in the sector. So, so when, when, when we plan our development, it's a lot more than, than providing four uh, walls and a roof. Um, uh, we, 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 we look at the, the social, the, the human um, and social experience in its totality. So we provide uh, running tracks, gardens, uh, community gardens, community centers, there'll be retail, there'll be schools, there'll be, you know, uh, we, we look at the full, at, at the person's full of the, um, living experience and provide for all of that. And we're pretty confident that, that our product stands out um, head and shoulders above 
anything else in the area. When do you hope to start breaking ground? Look, we, we are officially launching um, on Thursday. Um, so the, uh, inside of the second quarter next year. As far as your first build for your first phase goes, when are you hoping that people will be moving in? Um, yeah, look, so we're looking at, you're looking at 12 to 18 months uh, from the start of construction before the first units will be ready. So, so a year from now. The, the proximity to, to East London is fantastic, but you also have a pretty much a shortcut to Bishu, the home of the Eastern Cape Parliament, etc. Are you hoping right. that that will also create a demand for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, um, it's, it's close to the airport, it's close to the, the, the road to Bishu. Um, but yeah, and, and fundamentally, we, we think that, that given the price point and, 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 and our, our target market, we, we don't foresee a problem with, uh, with the market. I, I think, I think uh, given we, we, we've done significant market research and, and the area is the right area and the price point is the right price point for people require. And, and again, given given what it is we want to achieve, so there'll be a full spectrum from from affordable rental through to sales. Um, you know, so we, we're catching the full spectrum of the market, affordable accommodation. So we, we, we really are trying to bring a a, a a section of the population in that that would not normally have access to the kind of product that that we offer. But it's widespread. Okay, just a final question before I move on to the fellow who will actually be marketing your property here. Um, Ashley, I see you will be putting up a school. Will that be an affordable private school will you, or will you be using um, a government school? No, so it will be a, a very affordable private school. We've just finished an interview with Ashley Apolis, who's putting the money, or through his consortium, putting the money into the project, to our next guest, Sean Newland Nell of Full Circle Property. Sean, your company's been going for about two years now, although your combined experience with you and your partners probably exceeds 30 years. But am I correct in assuming that this is the real plum job that you guys have had so far? Good afternoon, Ted. Yes, sir, it definitely is something that we as Full Circle Properties are very excited about and certainly a, an, an, an amazing opportunity for us to really get a name out in East London for ourselves. Just as a, as a, almost an introduction, how did you guys manage to get this? Ted, um, I've got a bit of a unique background in that um, my roots in the property industry started off in the uh, development industry. Uh, we used to buy and sell properties of our own privately. And... Um, through that avenue, I was able to make some really good contacts in the, in the planning, if I can call it, call it that. Uh, planning phases of what to do when one buys a piece of land and how you get from just a piece of land to a, a finished end product. And with that knowledge and with um, old, the old story of not what you know, but who you know, and luckily I was able to meet some fantastic people who who supported me and who, who stood by us as, as a new company and, and uh, gave us this fantastic opportunity. Uh, in, in actual fact, our name was, was, was recommended to um, the developer more than once, um, which, was, which, which is a massive feather in our caps. You guys have managed to keep this very... Under the <laughs> under the radar, haven't you? I mean, yes, sir. You you've ju just about to launch. In fact, you have launched. Um, how many units will there be once built out, or is that not 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 ascertained yet? Approximately, one's looking at about a thousand seven hundred units. That does change from time to time as as planning in the later phases may change. Um, obviously, we're going to be able to tell once the development really kicks off, which is going to happen this weekend, um, which which offerings in the development are going to be most sought after, and and therefore the developer may change some of the planning to accommodate the demand. As Ashley pointed out to us earlier, um, I made <laughs> the mistake of saying the entry level was seven million. His reply was, "Yes, he he wished it was." But it's Me just too, since we uh, <laughs> work on commission. It's just 
slightly higher than 700,000. But in today's times, that's pretty affordable, is it not? Absolutely. This is a very exciting offering for, for the East London market. Firstly, we're so close to the business node. We've got the IDZ right on our doorstep. We've got Daimler Chrysler equally as close. We've got um, government departments, Bishu is close. Um, and it's, a, it's an environment which is going to be safe, modern, and, and really a place where people can live, work and play, um, and so close to town. He was speaking about the school and that there will be a school built there. Is that in the early phases or is that a promise far to the future? No, that does come um, a little bit further down the line. I wouldn't say far into the future. It's definitely something that is on the cards. It is something which the developer is investigating at the moment. And I can also tell you that some, some key role players have already been, have already been engaged. So um, it's definitely something that is going to happen. We've got an interview, Dispatch Live is an interview later in the week with Kuro, the school. Is that the sort of brand that you guys are or after? I, I can't really comment on that. I haven't had much of the um, negotiations and interaction with the, the, the schooling side of things. We've focused mainly at this stage on the, on the residential because at the end of the day, we've got to get numbers in the property sales for the rest to follow. So really, at, uh, at this stage, our mandate and our key focus is to, is to sell homes at this stage. The... The aspect of plot and plan is often quite attractive, but you just won't be doing a plot and plan. You have a uniform approach, and presumably it will look fantastic. People quite enjoy uniformity. Absolutely. So the key word here is turnkey. Um, so it's very much a, a turnkey development. And the advantage of that is that the development will come up in uniformity from when they start. So you're not going to have bits and pieces of, of vacant land at a later stage, which you know has the potential to make a development perhaps look a bit untidy. So it, it'll be it'll be turnkey and the and the phases will be opened as and when there's the demand for them. Sean um, as far as finance and bond goes, are you chaps linked to one bank or are you linked to several banks? No, we are linked to several banks. We are, we are linked to one a bond originator and the bond originator will handle that side of things for us. The bond originators are Uber, Uber Home Finance, um, and we'll be working hand in hand with them um, you know, to ensure that our clients are able to secure the necessary finance. So as far as the sales team goes, you guys are enthusiastic, you are new on the job, if I... And correct with that. But Uber is also quite a new concern. So there's a lot of excitement here. Absolutely. Yes, we, we certainly are. We're looking forward to getting going. We've got a, um, a, a very dynamic team and uh, yeah, are passionate about selling property. That's very important in, in, in this industry to, is to enjoy what you do. And we certainly we, we enjoy selling property and, and being involved with people. There's always been big competition between East Coast and West Coast and the um, East Coast was certainly giving you guys a bit of a thump with the beautiful developments around the Wild Coast, but they're small developments. Now you've got yours with well over a thousand. Uh, MHG Holdings has got 5,000. Are we not possibly being overtraded here? I don't believe so. I believe that um, the, the market, there's certainly a demand for, for this kind of housing. And as I said to you earlier, you know, being so close to town, this is what's going to be attractive for so many people. To be able to get yourself into a brand new home within these price brackets and to be so close to town. We've all experienced the, the pinch on our wallets as the fuel prices continue to increase. So certainly being honestly couple of kilometers from the airport, it's, it's, it's extremely convenient. And then, of course, you've got the beach just down the road as well as an added bonus. So um, I, I, believe, I believe this development is going to do extremely well. And there's a lot of people moving out of the big cities to places like East London with the work-from-home situation. 
So, Sean Newland-Nell from Full Circle. Thanks, Sean. Goodbye.